Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. For a third time, the Nigerian Labour Congress, uh, I mean, the organized labor, which comprises of the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress, have rejected federal government's offer in the negotiation over minimum wage. Today, they have again rejected a fresh minimum wage proposal by the federal government. Don't forget that the last time, the, uh, the, uh, the Labour said that they are not satisfied with what the federal government is brought to the table. The organized Labour have rejected the offer of uh, 60,000 naira as new minimum wage for workers. The organized Labour says that they've shifted ground uh, from its 497,000 naira stand last week to 494,000. Don't forget that Labour initially proposed 615,000 naira in the initial stage, in which they said that is labor stand, but that has been reduced for the third time, uh, second time that is, labor has shifted grounds from 497,000, I mean, from 494,000 to 497,000, a difference of 3,000 naira. Uh, what a difference indeed. But let's get an understanding on the reason why 60,000 is no no for labor. I'm being joined by the President of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Festus Osifo. Thank you so much, Comrade, for joining us tonight. It does, it does look like uh, labor is, uh, we know, go green stand. Uh, You're not green for anybody. Stand is still maintained on the third time. This time around, what did you find out? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Shehu. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, good evening, Nigerians. Uh, yeah, Shehu, you know, um, the position of labor has been very, very clear. You know, today, the government came to the negotiation table. If you remember the last time, it was 57,000 naira. So they moved, just as you have articulated, they moved to 60,000 naira. So when they moved to 60,000 naira, the first thing that we asked them is that, please, can you kindly tell us, Break this 60,000 naira down. Uh, how do you want a Nigerian to survive on this today? Uh, somebody that is um, grade level one, zero, um, uh, grade level one, step one. Okay, how will this person survive? Let's assume that this person is working in the central area and he lives in Lube or he lives in Maraba or he lives in Yaya. Can you kindly give us the breakdown? What is the cost of transportation that is embedded in this um, 60,000 naira? What is the cost of feeding that is embedded in it? Give us that breakdown. They did not. So, but on the part of labor, you know, from the beginning, we have been very, very consistent on this subject because we have given breakdown on how we think a man that is married to a woman with four children, how he will survive. Because for us, uh, the president has promised from day one that he was going to give Nigeria a living wage. Uh, you can go and read his inauguration speech and all the subsequent speeches he has made to the country. So we kept drawing them there. But on their part, they did not give us that breakdown. Uh, so if you look at today, 60,000 Naira today is at about 1,500 Naira exchange rate. It is about, um, it is about $40. Uh, if you look at the last two minimum wage, so when we negotiated 18,000 Naira, 18,000 Naira minimum wage in 2011 was equivalent to about $125. Then 30,000 minimum wage at all, uh, depending on the exchange rate you used, it was about uh, between $95 to $100. But you cannot give us $40 because the value, so our problem is not actually the volume of money. So you will hear 60,000 Naira think, oh, this is huge amount of money, Shehu. But the question is, what is the value of this money? Our currency has eroded over time, and the purchasing power of our Naira has greatly reduced. So 60,000 Naira today is far, 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 I mean, cannot buy for us what 18,000 Naira could buy for us in 2011 and what 30,000 Naira could buy for us in, 20, in 2019. So that is the essence of discussing minimum wage. Minimum wage is to restate you to where you were previously, if not better. But where we are today, it is far, far, far away from it. So I want to bring your attention to the fact that Angola just increased their minimum wage. Angola is a crude oil production, producing nation like Nigeria. 
Nigeria. They move their minimum wage to about 100,000 Kwanzaa, and that is equivalent to $120. This is just Angola. And Angola is not the best in Africa. Uh, you look at Libya, you could look at Morocco, you could look at Sitges, you could look at Mauritius. So what we have told government is that for in the for Nigeria, with all the challenges that we are having today, a $40 cannot take anybody home as it stands today. And that is why, on the part of labor, we rejected it. Because, again, Shun, yeah. in accounting, in financial economics, there is what they call net present value. You could do the net present value of your 18,000 Naira in 2011, or your 30,000 Naira, and just have an idea of where we are. Uh, today. So we rejected this staunchly. We strongly feel, believe that government, if they sit up, if they tighten all the loose ends, if they do what other governments in different parts of the world are doing, we believe that they can offer Nigerian a minimum wage. Just as being demonstrated today in Angola and demonstrated in several countries in Africa. So for us, we are rejecting it. We are not there yet. In the first place, when government offered 48,000 Naira, Labour was very upset, rejected it, and staged a workout. And you came out as Labour, uh, organized Labour, that government did not have sufficient grounds and the instrument to be able, and the data and the figures to be able to negotiate at that time. In fact, Labour has said the federal government did not look like a serious entity going into that uh, uh, negotiation. But let me ask you, the manner in which Labour had presented itself, I mean, is the Tunubu government the most, well, when you said you were, they were unserious at the time, would you say this government look non-challenged to, uh, to the interest and the plight of the average Nigerian or the Nigerian workers? The manner in which they've comported themselves and the way they put themselves forward in this negotiation. Yes, so from from what is going on, uh, one is not far from reaching such conclusions uh, that all they have demonstrated is some level of uh, uh, being not challenged. Because if the president of the country has promised the country that is going to bring about a living wage. He did not even talk about a minimum wage. He said he was going to bring about a living wage. And today we are discussing a minimum wage of forty dollars or sixty thousand naira. I think uh, we are we are far away from it. Yes, if you say that the government is not challenged, I think we quite agree. In our last meeting, we said that the government that they were not serious. We still are bad by that today. That the government is not yet serious with these negotiations, that they are not yet serious with these conversations. So, if you remember, May 1st, we, uh, we, we issued an ultimatum that by May 31st, if there is no new minimum wage in place, that uh, we can no longer guarantee industrial action. Do you know that before that May 1st, they did not even invite us for, for a meeting almost throughout April until that ultimatum was issued, then we are now meeting back to back to back. So for a government that is serious, for people that are desirous to bring their uh, citizens out of this dodgeon, to bring their citizens out of these difficulties, uh, this minimum wage should have been something that we should have taken much more seriously. Because if you increase the purchasing power of workers, what you are doing is that you are strengthening the manufacturing service Sector. You are strengthening the retail economy because the workers, they will have much more money to buy goods and services. But today, you have manufacturing companies, they are even closing down because they have goods, their goods are stored in the warehouse, and people don't have money to buy, apart from the few money bags. So it is a real challenge. So government must be very, very serious in, and desirous in bringing about a new minimum wage that could address the plight of Nigerians today. If we were discussing this minimum wage in an era where fuel subsidy was still there, in an era where uh, you still have the electricity subsidy as it was fully, we were discussing it in an era where USD was one dollar one, one to 450 naira. So 60,000 is something that we could have looked at to say, okay, in a bit, it is a bit reasonable. But today, show where we are with inflation over 34%, with that general headline inflation, with food inflation over 40%, show with our exchange rate to make it from about 450 naira officially to 1,500. Uh, today, uh, the economy is in tatters and in shambles. Today, cost of transportation has skyrocketed. You can go on and on and on. So offering 60,000 naira will not even 
carry someone from Yaya, from Lube to Central right, Area. I'll transfer somebody from Ikoku that is working in VR in Lagos. This cannot work. Cool. So for us, we completely reject it. We want government to be serious. Let them come and give us a breakdown of how somebody or a family is going to live with a minimum wage of 60,000 naira. And remember, our ultimate of six of six that we have issued on May 1. And today is 28th day of May. So what that clearly means is that we still have about three days to resolve this subject. Because as Labour, we are desirous to ensure that the plight of our members the plight of our of Nigerian workers, both in public and private sector, is totally protected. And we are prepared to ensure that government actually do what is right. Because it is the function of government to turn human resources, material resources, and, and, and mineral resources into, into prosperity for its citizens. And we are not seeing this government, both at the state and local and, 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 and federal level. You know, we have we have not seen them uh, doing this. And it's our responsibility to hold them to account to ensure that the needful is done. And we are quickly, prepared uh, to uh, get that done. Comrade, quickly, let me ask you. In all of this, this is a, this is a heavy indictment on the government. Uh, when you say that they are nonchalant and they are unserious. And when we wonder, this is in the interest of the Nigerian workers that we are talking about here. But in in in, in summary... You are saying that in the next few days, you are going on the street in protest. You've won before, you've given an ultimatum, and that deadline is almost here. You will go back to the street. Is that what you're saying? And to conclude this conversation, comrade, as the leader of labor, speaking on behalf of the Nigerian labor, how would you assess this government in the, la in the light of a government labor relation and government uh, uh, attitude to its workers. How would you rate them? We're looking at them in the last one year. If you do your assessment as a leader of labor, is it poor? Is it good? Is it the best? Uh, okay, so before I answer this particular last one, from what you said earlier, yes, we issued an ultimatum, and that ultimatum cease of cease uh, till 31st of May, midnight, for government to do the needful. Uh, because for us, um, you know, we had a National Executive Council meeting, both in NLC and TUC. So in that National, uh, National Executive Council meeting, the leadership of both centers were mandated uh, to use whatsoever legal means to get government uh, to put in place a, a wage that could take a Ni uh, Nigerian or an average worker home. So we are committed to seeing through uh, that particular charge that our neck has given to us as the leaders of organized labor. Then secondly, in terms of the rating, yeah, the government labor relationship, yeah, for us, um, from a scale of 10, uh, we cannot rate them much more, uh, probably 2.5, uh, because um, the communication between labor and, the, uh, between organized labor and government has been very poor. You know, before you bring about policies and programs, you have to think through. Before you, I mean, the formu policy formulation processes needs deep thinking need, oh, this policy that I want to bring about, how will this affect uh, both the macro economies, the micro economies, how will it affect the pocket of, 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 of individuals. These simulations are always done. But we have seen that this is lacking in this government, because we've seen a lot of knee jack reactions, and that is why you've had a lot of policy somersault. And for a government that is just one year old, yes, it's good. They always listen to Nigerians and revert back but what is actually best is that before you bring about those policies, before you bring, I mean, in the formulation phase, and if you are conceiving it, you must have deep thinking. You must have carried out a lot of modeling, a lot of simulation, a lot of analysis to ensure right. that at the end of the day, that your policies are not impoverishing the masses. So for us, for, we will rate them 2.5 out right. of uh, 10, which is a 25%. Thank you so much indeed, comrade. We'll be following up on these. And we are China Salvation. We're keeping this plight of the Nigerian workers in the front banner. We're not allowing you to die because this is in the interest of the Nigerian people. And do let us know as that conversation continues and your negotiation continues. I wish you and the very uh, lovely Nigerian workers the very best in all of this. Thank you so much indeed, comrade Festus Osifo. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you so much indeed.